only asked me to do one story while you're here, and I haven't had a chance to do it yet. And I haven't forgotten about that Fountain Square issue. And I don't know if it's too late to get to it. It's that. not too late. Our president here is right in the middle of it. And she'll tell about a, a conference that she'll be setting up here uh, to deal with this very issue. If you'll please find me at Nouveau. It's, oh, absolutely. it's absolutely. not that I've forgotten about it. It's absolutely. just that there's a lot going on at I once. Know. I and, know. Um, <coughs> And it's really hard to figure out um, whether to watch the state house or whether to watch city hall. Well, or you're one to you're a one person news. news team. I mean, I'm a one, 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 one person news team. Um, Carl, you deserve you know a feature and a cover. And I know that I mean I I was raised in Bloomington and I was r running around the country. So I'm not I married an indie boy. So I you know I have roots here now, but. I don't know all these stories that, that everybody's talking about, and I sure would like to hear them, you know, and I would like to, have, maybe when you get settled in on the other side, sure. we can sit down and talk about that. Sure. But um, I think before I hit the road tonight, I'm, I'm commuting back and forth between Bloomington right now, mm -hmm. while my house is, is fixed up here. I grew up down there, so it's okay, it's good. Um, but before I leave tonight, if I could just videotape really quick, and I don't think people would mind if, if I just ask you to make one statement about your hope for peace activism moving forward here here in India and globally, but especially I'm going to move a little closer to you so I can get the decent sound. Let's hear it for a journalist with heart. Yeah. <laughs> so. The, the peace and justice movement... Oh, hold on one second. Sorry. Okay. The peace and justice movement started a real long time ago. I think that people have been dreaming about that concept from the very beginning. You know, little children that were, you know, the native people that I used to hang out with all the time. The elders would see certain children that would behave in certain ways, and they would be, they would be, uh, helping one another stop fighting. You know, don't hurt him. And the elders would see that, and they would say, "We'll raise this child over here to be a leader." And but they would, they could also take it away if that leader became arrogant. But the main thing was that real leadership is in all of us, in every single one of us worldwide, that we can make a difference. And, you know, people talk about optimism. I don't know where that comes from, except for the fact that I know that we can make a difference. You know, if you, if you try something and it works, fine. If it doesn't work, then that, you don't quit. This is a struggle for survival of the planet Earth and life as we know it on this planet Earth. We've created weapons now that can change the whole biological structure of our planet Earth. So whatever it is, whether it's through global warming, the problems of global warming, or whether it's through nuclear annihilation, or uh, the drone warfare that's going on globally, but it all comes down to being able to let people know that we have to raise our children in a manner that they are not wanting to go to war. That it's not, it's not, these video games drive me crazy. I'm, it breaks my heart to see these children sitting in front of those video games and learning how to kill. There's a book out called Quit Teaching Our Kids to Kill. And in this book, it talks about a child down southern. In, uh, he, he, he's 12 years old, and he'd never had a pistol in his life. But yet he's playing these video games morning and night, how to kill, how to kill. And he went into a next-door neighbor's house, and he took the weapon of a neighbor. He stole it, and he took it to school. And he, he shot a number of children in his school, all headshots, not one shot missed, not even is either a thoracic shot or a head shot. And this child had never held a, a weapon in his hand in his life, a real one. But he was an expert killer. 
just the stuff they teach us when we're in the military. Take your time. Save your ammunition. Don't get excited. You survive. He has taught all that at the age of 12. What are we doing? We are the greatest empire this world has ever seen. And we have to bring our troops home from all over the world. We will fail. Every empire does. That's right. Every empire does fail. And this one will fail as well because of a number of factors. Internal corruption and people like us that are saying, pointing out the truth. And external, around the world, everybody in the world knows what America is doing except for Americans themselves. We have to educate the rest of the Americans about what we're doing. The third thing is economics. It gets too expensive to maintain this global empire. All these military bases, a thousand military bases we know about, and hundreds and hundreds of little tiny things called lily pads, where the special forces can come in and set up a little compound, lock it up, and whenever there's anything going on in that region, they just fly in a helicopter with no weapons, and they're ready for, they're, they open it up, and they're ready to go. All over the world, these, these units are being set up called lily pads. You don't even have to have any troops there. They're there in the Philippines. I'll find out about that, where they are, and try to expose it. They might kick me out of the Philippines. I don't know. I've been all over the world, and, uh, and I'm going to do what I can. I'm not going to uh, bite my, my tongue when I get to the Philippines. And um, I have to be careful because of my family, you know, so I have to be a little bit more careful than in other places I've been, because this is delicate. But uh, I know that with if we join together on a global basis, all of us, and every one of us, I don't like this idea that I'm going to leave something, I'm going to go away and something's going to be lost here. I don't, I don't, if that's the case, then I haven't done my job. Okay. That's how I feel. Reverend Hatcher. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Uh, folks, um, I've got to say, this was handed out today, my wife and I were walking around downtown. It was handed to us by a 